I don't usually uh, follow Michael Moore, but I thought I'd listen to one of his podcasts, um, which he did with RuPaul, and RuPaul is from RuPaul's Drag Race. And it was quite interesting listening to it, um, because they were being quite candid about how they felt about the climate crisis, and um, also RuPaul kind of pulled Michael Moore away from this idea that you know, Trump is this incredibly evil figure and that it's all about, that it's about Trump and defeating Trump, Um, even though I'm sure that RuPaul probably thinks that he is a a really problematic figure. Um, You know, he sort of said, you know, Trump is an expression of, uh, of us in a way, of where we've gotten to. And he said, and of course, these two people, by the way, are very rich. Um, RuPaul is rich and so is Michael Moore. But, um, uh, it doesn't mean that they're um, sort of disconnected, of course, from the suffering that they're, they're seeing. And I'm hoping that they don't support... Uh, well, I know that Michael Moore, has um, he's been an avid supporter of the Democratic Party. But anyway, um, RuPaul was sort of talking about, you know, that Donald Trump is an expression of our society. Uh, and, you know, in a way... There's a lot of good people in the United States, but there's a lot of mean-spiritedness because of how things have gotten. I mean, people, eventually, they have to vote. They vote in these state elections for different people who end up bringing in uh, laws against homelessness and all that sort of thing. These things don't happen just without people actually voting and without people supporting um, political figures who are you know, sort of um, neoconservatives and neoliberals who don't care about uh, the suffering, the suffering poor. Um, And the suffering poor are victims of a neoliberal, neoconservative um, society uh, that is, uh, has end-stage capitalism. It can't be anything but what it is at the moment, um, how desperate people are, because that's capitalism. It ends up like this. There's no other way for it to go but to be in, to to be um, involved in imperialist wars because, as Lenin said, um, cap- capitalism and imperialism are inextricably linked, and it can't be anything but how it is now: the extreme exploitation, and you have the likes of, um, you know, Je- Jeff Bezos, who's incredibly wealthy, like 160 billion billion with a B dollars. And there are three people in the United States that are more wealthy than most of the, more than half of the population. Well, that's obscene. So, anyway, back to RuPaul. Um, He wasn't drawn into any conversation about who he was going to support. And Michael Moore is supporting Bernie Sanders this time, but he was supporting, you know, he... He switched to Hillary Clinton last time. He gets regularly on the mainstream media. And I don't think he wants to lose his ability to go on the mainstream media. So he doesn't criticize directly the Democratic Party. So they're sitting and talking about what's wrong, you know, with the way things are and that it's, you know, um, and rather than looking at the parties. I'm talking about now Michael Moore, rather than Michael Moore looking at the party that he has supported and probably given money to, etc. He's talking about the, you know, sort of mean-spirited, you know, sort of people in society, you know, like he said, and and I agree with this to some degree, like, who, who gets any joy from seeing people, you know, struggling and and that they don't have health care and all of that? Um, and that's a good thing, like, you know, that's a good thing to think about, like, why would anybody take joy in somebody not being able to afford to buy insulin that will keep them alive? Why would anybody feel any joy seeing somebody laying on a, on cardboard on the side of the road, uh, on the, you know, or on, under a bridge? It's, it's appalling. Who, who would... Who would feel any joy about that? But obviously there are some people that do because they vote in these awful public figures that just are criminalizing the most vulnerable in our society. And uh, when you think about it, 
uh, there are there are beings that are even more vulnerable, that being non-human animals, and they're considered property in law. So they're actually the most vulnerable in society, but most people don't think of them that way because we view them as resources. That's where being vegan comes into it. I'm not really digressing, this is all related. So anyway, so but the, the thing is, that the point I'm trying to make here is that unless you're able to step outside of the... He's obviously wants to still be continue wants to still be invited on mainstream media the mainstream media mostly uh, supports you know you get Fox News that supports Trump and you and you get mainstream media MSNBC CNN and all of those that support the Democratic Party and they're all in cahoots with one another they're all um, sort of the, the mainstream media just put out Democratic Party talking points if that means uh, smearing Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders is remotely progressive then they'll do that and they'll keep doing it until everybody believes that he's this or that so so Michael Moore doesn't want to step away from that like a step away from mainstream media and put himself outside the herd mentality and directly um, criticize the Democratic Party who are as awful in many ways as the GOP they just pretend the Democratic Party just pretends that it's for diversity and and it does the whole I feel your pain and all of that but they really couldn't give a toss if they gave a toss they would um, allow Bernie Sanders to have fair um, primary elections they wouldn't have already tried to they already stole a primary from him and made no apologies for it and they're going to do it again for sure because um, in truth as Whitney Webb most eloquently pointed out during the Super Tuesday Whitney Webb is from Mint Press News she's a journalist she said there's really no difference between either party and it, it becomes very it, can, it must become very clear to you uh, when you see the Democratic Party picking a cognitively impaired well she didn't say this but I'm saying it when you see them pick a cognitively impaired uh, Democratic nominee they want him to be the nominee Biden Joseph Biden over Bernie Sanders who has been consistently um, very good on domestic policy not very good on foreign policy that's I've talked about that in other videos so I'm not going to talk about it again here but he's been very good on domestic policy and he wants people to have Medicare for all student debt elimination and all the various things that would benefit people including you know people of color he's not for reparations I don't know why he doesn't support BDS um, that's unfortunate but you know a lot of his policies are are very good in general and would help a lot of people so you know Michael Moore like even when people sit back and they're critiquing things and you think they're being very candid there's still this very for me a very obvious absence I'm not I'm gonna put Ron Paul aside here because um, I don't really follow him and I don't know um, I like his he said some really good things I'll leave a link to that podcast but um, I'm just talking about Michael Moore now um, unless Michael Moore is prepared to step outside of that herd mentality and start directly criticizing the Democratic Party for what it is that it's really just it's just one big party the GOP and the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party isn't worried if Trump gets in for four more years as much as they'll pretend they feign care on camera they don't care they don't care if 45 gets in for four more years and and we, we start, all start galloping towards fascism they don't care in fact he'll probably do the sort of things that the Democratic Party would like him would like to do but they don't want the negative um, the negative feedback from it the negative repercussions of it so they'll let him do it they'll let 45 do it and they don't have to get the blowback from that so it you know it becomes very clear when you see that they would rather have uh, somebody who's definitely will lose to Trump. Trump will run circles around Joe Biden. Joe Biden is having problems 
keeping it together mentally, cognitively, and I don't take any joy in seeing anybody go like that. But uh, if he was, say, three years away from uh, the elections, I don't know if he would hold it together that long, because he's not at the moment. If you've seen that clip of him saying, um, trying to repeat something from the uh, the Constitution, and he got through a half of it, half of the sentence, and then sort of said, "And you know the thing, you know the thing." That's how he ended it. He couldn't remember the first line of this very well-known Constitution a line from the Constitution. I think it is. I'm not a U.S. citizen, so I'm not that familiar with it. But I've heard it myself, and I kind of. Um, actually even knew this, the part that he didn't know. And I'm not even from the US. So it's a worry that he can't even remember that line. I'll see if I can play it to you. Um, and Trump is just going to be able to, if I was, you know, if, if, because they play dirty, all, all politicians play dirty in the end. If, uh, if I was uh, his political campaign, Trump's political campaign, and I wanted to be really dirty, I'd just pick out all the the awful gaffes in quotes, they're not really gaffes, it's just that he's losing it. <clears throat> all those awful kind of gaffes in quotes that he says, and also the sniffing of hair and the kissing children, um, you know, who are obviously pulling away from him and sniffing women's hair and all of that. I'd put it all together in various campaign ads, and all you have to do is play that and probably say, would you really want somebody that is that lacking cognitively and that lacking in impulse control you know running the country now mind you Donald Trump is also lacking cognitive um, abilities too I mean without a teleprompter he'd be it'd be incredibly embarrassing I mean there was one point I didn't think he knew that Puerto Rico was part of the United States and I bet you if you asked him some questions about, like, I know that Amy Klobuchar didn't know who the president of Mexico is. I bet you there was a point after Donald Trump got uh, into office where he probably didn't know either. Uh, you know, that they, I probably know more about some things than he does. Like, he's just not that interested. And he just kind of fluffs his way through things. Well, they're both awful, Biden and Trump. Trump is awful, but, I mean, he's actually probably a bit more together than Biden which isn't saying much. But Trump, Trump obviously has people that are, are keeping it together for him. It's amazing. Have you ever seen that movie, uh, Being There, with um, Peter Sellers? It kind of reminds me, the U.S. politics every election, it sort of reminds me of that, but more so now. Um, Chauncey Gardner was a... He wasn't very bright, and somehow he managed to become the president of the United States through... It's, yeah, I can't explain it. You'll have to watch it. But it's, it's actually quite fascinating. And nobody noticed. He was saying all these sort of very sort of short and short sentences about things, and people thought they were incredibly in-depth. They thought that he was almost zen-like. And they didn't notice. And it was all about people pushing him up to the top, too, in the end, seeing things in him that weren't there. But while... While U.S. society is in disarray this way, as in people are incredibly poor and they're struggling, um, you're always going to get the public rejecting this party, the Democratic Party, that pretends that it cares about U.S. citizens and nothing ever changes. In fact, things get worse. And they'll go for someone. It's almost like an F.U. There, of course, there are people that are racist that vote for Trump, but I think at this point, if when people vote for Trump this time, it'll just be a exponential shift towards him because it's like the, the Democratic Party is ridiculous and they're doing an F you to the whole system sort of thing, except that Donald Trump is, is um, not their friend and he's going to screw them too, but probably worse. And he's going to be become a fascist figure. By the end of his four years, he's going to be really horrific. He's already that way in a way, but he's, um, you know, once he's got the mandate for the next four years, goodness knows what will happen. And like I've said, um, I'd say the first thing he'll do is invade Iran. And they're trying to destroy Iran with economic sanctions, and they won't even send, they won't even let 
medicines get through at the moment, despite the fact that they're suffering terribly with this coronavirus. That's a genocidal intent towards Iran. So anyway, um, I'm not really sure what I'm saying, but I, I just find it's, it's sort of amazing to me that even when people are speaking candidly about uh, how dire the political situation is, the fact that there's really only a Bernie Sanders type that they have, and Bernie Sanders is still has imperialist leanings, still vilifies countries that haven't submitted to the U.S., calling Chavez a fascist, was it, sorry, Chavez a, a, a despicable dictator or something, uh, that sort of thing. Now, there's only like one Bernie Sanders they have there. That's the best they have. And mind you, it's not good here in Australia either. We're going to end up like that too. I can see that happening. I mean, the people we have in government right now are Trump-like. They're awful in Australia. But it disturbs me that even when people are being candid, they cannot call out this dreadful Democratic Party. And as Whitney Webb said, it should be very clear to people by now that the Democratic Party and the GOP are just one big party. And neither side really care, in some ways, who gets in. Um, because they still get all their, you know, corporate money, they still get lobbyist money, and all of that sort of thing. It doesn't really matter to them. They're still raking it in, and when they leave, they do okay too. They don't have to worry about healthcare. And it's getting like that here in Australia too. The, the um, donations are getting bigger, like donations from the coal industry doubled towards uh, the major parties this year, Labour Party and, the, um, and the, the coalition. The coalition is in government. But here's the thing, the difference between Australia and, and the US. We have preferential ranked choice voting here. And if, you, if, if a party went on, like if a major party went on like the Democratic Party is going on right now and, and actually stealing elections from candidates, etc. They would not exist now. That, that would be the end of them because we have ranked choice voting and people would shift away from that party and they would lean towards some other party. The day that the, the, day that the government, and I'm sure they'd try, probably try and do this, but the, gay, the day that the government tries to get rid of ranked choice voting, preferential voting, will be the day that we dem democracy is dead here because we won't be able to do anything but vote for either duopoly and eventually they become like each other they become they fuse together like a blob and there's very there's little daylight between them they just pretend to be a bit different so i hope heaven forbid that ever happens here but i'm sure they would like it to happen what happens in the united states tends to happen here they see things working very well for oligarchs and corporations and stuff in the United States and they, they take notes but um, the thing is until the US gets rid of the electoral college until the US has ranked choice preferential voting until the US has a media that isn't just a corporate owned media that's basically run by six corporations and puts out propaganda talking points in the national security state and things like what they're doing to Bernie Sanders smearing a, a, a slight a progressive candidate to some degrees progressive until until they you have until the US has paper ballots and they get rid of those dodgy um, remote uh, dodgy dodgy electro, um, electronic voting machines that you can hack even a 12 year old can hack them um, you know until what other things until you get big money out of politics and get rid of the lobbyists and all the money that they can put in there there's there's and, and get rid of the super delegates and the super PACs. There's a whole bunch of things that need to be addressed. Um, until that's all done, you, you one couldn't say remotely that there's any sort of democracy there. And of course there isn't, it's an oligarchy. And this and we're like this here, we we're controlled by the Murdoch press here. It's 
it's dreadful. We don't even have things like Empire Files or the Grey Zone. We have one probably lot of people, the Juice Media, and they're not even journalists. They're a satirical group, but they're doing most of the journalism. I mean, we, we don't even have the sort of things holding politicians' feet to the fire that in, in the United States. There's, there's independent journalists over there doing very dangerous work at this point, I think. Uh, courageous work like the Empire Files and that kind of thing. Exposing Empire is very dangerous. It's the other thing. You don't even get like people like Michael Moore talking about Empire in any real way and the wars that are going on and how they're all backing them. They're, they're giving Donald Trump, who they call a, push, a Putin puppet, they're giving him like $736 billion was the last amount of military spending they gave Donald Trump. If they truly believed he was some sort of Russian asset, they wouldn't be giving him that kind of money. They wouldn't be giving him that kind of money for military spending. And they wouldn't be, I don't know if they've removed this yet, but they, or added it, but they stripped back the, in the NDAA, they stripped back the ability for, to get congress, um, congressional approval to um, invade Iran. The Democrats, they stripped back that ability to get dem, uh, congressional approval. If they believed everything that they say about him and the media says about him, Rachel Maddow and all of that, like, like he's like the devil, you know what I mean, to them, the, the way they portray him. And I'm, I'm not sticking up for him at all. I think he's awful. But it's dangerous when you put out stuff that isn't true. There's enough about him that's true, like the genocide in Yemen and all of that. There's a whole bunch of things that he's done. Uh, you know, but they're actually picking things that, and making out stuff that isn't true about him, which is sort of, just shows that they don't want to expose anything, they don't want to complain about the genocide in Yemen, even. How insane is that? You know what I'm saying? But if they believed every, all that stuff they say about him, why are they giving him $736 billion, billion with a B, for military spending. You see, they don't even believe what they're saying. And they all support empire and endless wars, all of them, the Democratic Party. Even Bernie Sanders at times, is, he's, he says imperialist talking points, but then he backpedals and says, no, we need diplomacy. Why even put those imperialist talking points out there? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, it's just sad, you know, even just seeing this candid conversation with Michael Moore and, and RuPaul, uh, he just, he couldn't criticize the Democratic Party, even though he's supporting Bernie Sanders. Even Bernie Sanders won't, but I mean, I understand because he's actually in the party at the moment, but I mean, you know, like they're responsible for this mess. It, it hasn't come out of thin air. You know, and, and he's still howling, he's still calling Joe Biden his friend. Joe, how can you be friends with somebody who is deliberately screwing people, the public over? That's a monstrosity to me. I don't know how people can say, oh, you know, he and I are good friends. Really? What's the difference really between Donald Trump and Joe Biden? Except that Donald Trump is more outwardly racist and he does more out, outlandish things in a way, but if you look at Joe Biden's history, he's been trying to do over Latin America. For goodness knows how long. He's done terrible things in Latin America. He's helped with a coup in Ukraine. The list goes on. He's, he's screwed over the public on all sorts of things, too, in the United States. How on earth could anybody say they're friends with somebody that's complicit in that. You see, I, I don't get that. I, I don't understand that whole thing. I don't. Anyway, um, it's very depressing to me to see this um, current election in the United States. It's really depressing because, um, if anything, you need the absolute opposite to, to Donald Trump at this stage in time, even though it's, I believe it's too late 
in relation to climate crisis, but I don't stop pushing for, say, veganism and all the other things that we need to do to try and mitigate the disaster that's coming. But that we, you know, you don't need somebody that's going the other way which is what Donald Trump is doing, undoing all sorts of environmental things. And I mean, this is like the worst thing. It's like uh, the worst thing that one could have, the worst person one could have in office at this time. And, um, you know, I, I feel really, really, really sad for all these young people. Like... I'm actually fairly advanced in age now. I'm going to be 60 this year. And I actually think to myself, well, I wonder if I'll get to the end of my life without having to employ our exit plan if everything goes to hell in a handbasket and there is no food to eat. There's no plants anymore because everything is so, you know, there's a, basically a famine. Um, you know, because I don't want to starve to death. Who does, really, right? And, and yet there are people starving to death every day on the planet right now, right? Needlessly. Um, and there has been for a long, long time. This is the sort of weird fucking species we have. People are suffering and starving every day on the planet. But anyway, um, you know, I'm, I'm almost 60 and uh, I uh, wor wonder... It's going to be really fun when I'm sort of like, if I get to this age, if I get to 85, say, or 90, and I have to, do, we, and my partner and I um, have to deal with uh, famine. Isn't that going to be fun? But who, it's not going to be fun for young people either. And sometimes I wonder, why are people still having children? Why are they having children when the writing is on the wall? I, did you see my thing yesterday, my video yesterday about... In, in, I think it's um, 15 years, they expect the Amazon rainforest won't be able to store carbon anymore and will start putting carbon out because of all the drought and the deforestation from animal agriculture, another reason to be vegan. 2.5 acres every uh, minute are, are cleared for animal agriculture in the Amazon rainforest. So if we're not vegan, we're directly contributing to that. Plus the fact that we, we shouldn't we don't need to use animals at all. They're sentient. But but the the African tropical forests and the Amazon rainforest, they this this recent scientific study has said that in fifteen years they won't be able to hold any carbon anymore. So all that carbon I think that they're holding, they're going to start putting out, it seems. They're going to actually be contributing. That's insane. Now, I'm not even shocked when I read stuff like that. It, it's just like par for the course. You know what I'm saying? It's like par for the course. You sort of see insects are dying by the, uh, you know, the, there's a mass die-off of insects. That's a really big deal. And that's happening in Europe and it's happening in other places. There's so many things happening. I don't even want to know about it. So many dire ecological disasters happening simultaneously and the, and the feedback loops are the things that these conservative group these conservative groups like the IPCC don't factor into into the thing they have conservative reports and you know one of the one of the um, feedback loops is the methane coming up from the East Siberian Arctic shelf and there's huge amounts of methane under there and it's melting mammoth bones are coming up you know, so it's like, I think, why are people having children now? You know, somebody will, you'll see online, somebody will say, oh, I've just had a baby, you know, or my wife has had a baby or something. My partner's had a baby and everybody's, oh, you know. And I think, why are you doing that? What kind of life are these children going to have? Like, I'm almost 60 and I'm, what I'm concerned about that the shit's going to be really, really, really hitting the fan to the point in 30 years to the point of, you know, we're going to have some sort of famine or already be heading that way or, or, or maybe sooner even with all the feedback loops and stuff. I'm concerned about that at my age and here's somebody who's just being born 
has to deal at, say, 25 or 30 years old with that shit. I mean, it breaks my heart. I, I cannot fathom why people are, are doing that. And it just shows how this, you know, sex and the need to, and this thing to procreate is just, just <laughs> defies all logic. Anyway, I'm going off the track here. I don't know, I listened to this podcast and I I just thought, um, like RuPaul was saying, you know, we, we need to hit rock bottom before there's a new thing. The thing is that the... I think people have already hit rock bottom in that they're, start, they're struggling terribly in the United States and people are um, using opioids to, to opt out and die and suicide is increasing. They're already hitting rock bottom there, but there's an oligarchy and there's a small concentrated group of people who are holding back any sort of ability to get out from under the foot of, the, of, the, of these people. And uh, in the old days, out with the guillotines and stuff. I don't rec- I'm not advocating violence. I don't think that's a way to solve anything because you end up with brutes, again, in, in pe- places of power when people are violent and kill people and stuff. I'm not for violence, but I mean, this is the sort of situation in, in a few hundred years ago where people would have said, no, nope. no, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. And out come the pitchforks and the guillotines. So, but anyway, RuPaul was basically saying, so, um, you know, we, we need to, uh, you know, space isn't the final frontier, you know, looking within ourselves and being here now and, and meditating and stuff and trying to become more empathetic and caring, caring about others. Well, yes, I absolutely believe that. I don't believe any of this shit would be happening if people had sincere empathy for others, and that includes people that um, imperialist wars are destroying their countries and their lives. We wouldn't be okay with that. So obviously there's something... It's not 45 in office that's the problem. We. We are the problem. And he's just a manifestation of the mean-spiritedness and lack of care we have for other beings on the planet. And I don't really know what the solution is to getting rid of that one big party they have over there in the United States. I don't think voting is the answer, and you can see it's not, because they'll, they, I think they'd rather JFK Bernie Sanders and let him get anywhere near the office of the um, President of the United States. And if he actually tried to change anything, he'd probably be knocked off in some ways with weaponized cancer or who knows and who's going to think anything's weird because he's 76 there's a little bug on my hat (laughs) so I don't know what the answer is I really don't I don't know how bad it has to get before something happens I don't know do we have to go up in a mushroom cloud for this to end I I don't know or is is the planet going to end it for us because we're so dysfunctional as a species? It would seem that way eventually, but in the meanwhile, people are suffering terribly. So I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know how that's going to end there in the United States. This is the worst, the worst thing to witness. It's bad enough watching this lot here, but it is shocking watching what's going on in the presidential, the lead up to the presidential elections. And it's been, you know, when you see, you know, with the questions about, you know, JFK being knocked off by the CIA because he was wanting to um, back out of, you know, reports um, reveal that he wanted to back out of the Vietnam War. And there's a whole bunch of corporations had a lot of money banking on that war going, keep keeping going. And there were other things, too. He also wanted to dismantle the CIA. Well, I think, you know, the CIA is not backwards in... In, do, in assassinating people and overthrowing countries and stuff like that. And as somebody's pointed out, why would the CIA be happy with the United States getting a, a progressive president of, of any kind when they don't want a people's movement anywhere else in the world? Why would they let Bernie Sanders, um, who I, is, is wanting in the foreign pol- policy area, but why would... Why would they allow any sort of people's movement in the United States when they're not okay with it anywhere else in the world? But the rot set in many, many decades ago. 
and it's no wonder that it's like it is now. Many, many years ago, many decades ago, the rot was there. Anyway, <laughs> I, I don't want to have a crystal ball to be able to see in the future, but I would love to know how this ends for the US, because this can't go on. This sham of a du duopoly cannot go on. But they've got everything so sewn up now that there doesn't seem to be any way to break that stranglehold. But I do see that empire, US empire, is falling, and maybe it will take this awfulness with it. You can't keep going like that empire is. All empires fall, and um, it's falling, and it's very dangerous as it falls. But I don't know how it's going to end. Maybe it will end before... <laughs> Extinction hits us with uh, this climate crisis, runaway global warming. It's it's a race to the bottom, really, isn't it? Anyway, sorry, I, I don't mean this to be depressing. I, I just don't believe in I don't believe in glossing things up and and doing all this. There's plenty of people doing all this um, hopium, you know, false hope and optimism and we can fix this all if we fix it all in 10 years everything will be all right in relation to the climate crisis i'm sorry the time for net zero emissions was back in the early 90s at the latest 2050 that's ridiculous you know it should have been in the 90s and they knew about all of this they knew that this was coming greed is a terrible thing <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. Um, do what you can to make to be kind to others. Do what you can to um, to get involved in political processes and nonviolent civil disobedience and nonviolent grassroots movements. And don't forget to be vegan, because um, if we're if we are just with if we practice justice towards other animals and we don't treat the vulnerable like their resources, then we're going to extend that hopefully to all sentient beings, that includes humans. And we won't be able to tolerate the victimization of vulnerable humans. So please go vegan. Check out howtogovegan.org. Okay, thanks for watching. My name is Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Bye for now.